Oh, hi class, nice to see you today. In today's class, we're going to be talking today about how to use commas correctly. In your essays the other day that I was reading, your comma use was absolutely terrible, okay? So we need to work on that. We're going to work on using commas correctly. Ugh, but Mr. David, I'm already going off to college. Why do you have to keep bugging us? We're almost done with school. Can we just like chill or something today? Now, if you guys let me get back to my lesson, as I was saying, commas have many uses. And there's a myriad of them. You can use them in many different places in your writing. But the place that you guys were struggling the most in your essays was using commas before a coordinating conjunction. So can any of you guys tell me what a coordinating conjunction is, please? Oh, 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 oh. Me, teacher. Me, Mr. David. I can tell you what a coordinating conjunction is. <laughs> Great. How about you tell me, Goofy? You seem like an awfully smart guy. Well, teacher, a coordinating conjunction is a conjunction placed between words, phrases, clauses, or even sentences of equal rank. For example, and, but, for... Wow, thank you. That's a great definition for what a coordinating conjunction is, but... Um, could you please put your computer away? I kind of have the feeling that you're kind of looking these definitions up. Great. So now that we know what a coordinating conjunction is, and obviously we know what a comma is, how about you guys take your notebooks out and we can do some examples out here. Ugh. Darth Vader, where is your notebook? And don't, don't tell me that excuse that you were trying to conquer the galaxy, dark force, dark side type of thing, Luke Skywalker, okay? I told you last class that you need to bring your notebook. Is that... Teacher, you know, you don't believe me, but... You know I have to fight Luke... Skywalker and I... You know, I, ca I can't just leave the Empire... Yeah, well, okay. Just guess Teddy here to lend you a piece of paper, but I want your notebook next class. Great, so now that we all have a notebook or at least a piece of paper to write on, Mr. Vader, let's go on with our example. Here I have a simple sentence. As a result, selfishness and greed dominate our lives and we no longer care about each other. Obviously, there is something wrong in this sentence. So let's try and find what it is. Well, here we find one of those coordinating conjunctions that Mr. Goofy over there talked about. It's an and. So, let's see, here, there's obviously something missing, and since we're talking about commas, oh, well, it should be a comma. So here, this sentence is missing a comma right before the end that, go that goes after lives. So, look how much nicer it sounds. As a result, selfishness and greed dominate our lives, and we no longer care about each other. What I'm trying to say is that... If you use a coordinating conjunction to combine one sentence with another, you need to have a comma before that coordinating conjunction. If not, your grammar is wrong. So, as I was saying, here we have our example number two. The sentence reads as follows. Mr. David worried about finding someone to take care of the dog. Can anyone tell me what's wrong with this sentence? How about you, Mr. Moose? Yeah, go ahead. Teacher, that's super easy. What do you even ask? Obviously, you need a comma after dog and before the end. That's what you, you. That's just what you taught us, you know. Like, you need a comma before the coordinating conjunction. Well, actually, Mr. Moose, there is nothing wrong with this sentence. Let's read it again. Mr. David worried about finding someone to take care of the dog and providing a good home for him. Although there is a conjunction here between Mr. David worried about finding someone to take care of the dog and providing a good home for the for him. There's one slight detail. When you're talking about this rule of placing commas before coordinating conjunctions, there's something very important. Both the sentence before the coordinating conjunction and the clause, sorry, not the sentence, the clause, the clause before the coordinating conjunction and the clause after the coordinating conjunction have to be the same. So, for example, Mr. David worried about finding someone to take care of the dog 
is an independent clause. But here's the catch. The clause after the, the and here, providing a good home for him, is a dependent clause, which means that it wouldn't be able to stand on its own. So in this case, a comma does not actually go before the end. So what am I trying to say here? When you're writing a sentence that has a coordinating conjunction and you don't know if you need a comma before the coordinating conjunction, you can do the following. Read the first clause that goes before the coordinating conjunction and read the clause after. If both clauses can stand on their own, then it means that you have two independent clauses and this means that there is a comma that goes before the coordinating conjunction. But if you read both clauses and they're not both independent clauses, then this means that you don't need a comma before your coordinating conjunction. So before to ending today's lesson, I just want to go over the key idea which we talked about today. Oh, no, no, no. Don't go, don't go. Just, let me just go over this and then you guys can go to lunch. So, what did we talk about today? We said that a comma is used when combining two different types of clauses with a coordinating conjunction. See how I make an emphasis on different types. Remember, if you're dealing with a same, with two independent clauses, you don't need a comma before your coordinating conjunction. So make sure that you only place a comma before your coordinating conjunction when you're dealing with an independent clause and a dependent clause or any combination of those two. So, thank you for listening today. And Mr. Vader, please bring your notebook to class tomorrow or I'll be assigning extra reading for all of you guys.